Hi guys, and welcome to the 46th episode of the Yarn Junkie podcast. My name is Amber. Thanks so much for joining me if you're a new viewer, and thanks for returning if you're coming back for the second time. Here comes my dogs. I'm blockaded in here, but that's not going to stop Lucy. She gives no, she gives no cares about bags and boxes in her way. Are you kidding? This dog is huge. So if this is your first time joining me, this is my Lucy Mastiff. I'm coming to you from Texas, and this is my Yarny podcast about all things yarn. I am a knitter, crocheter, spinner, weaver. I just love yarn. So mostly a knitting podcast because that's what I do most of the time. Look at her. She's looking. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit your butt. Okay. Okay. Lucy had a bath the other day, but do you see the dirt? It doesn't matter. I can bathe these dogs every single week. I don't, but I could, and they'll stay dirty. So I've got three dogs, and this is one of them. This is Lucy, my biggest dog. She's probably like 95 pounds. I'm not sure. She hasn't been to the vet in a while. I have a lot to show you guys and not a lot of time to record, so I'll get started and get through what I can. Um, I feel like I've recorded a lot in the past week, and I still have so much to talk about, so... Sorry, not sorry. I was chatting a few days ago with my friend Molly of Molly Klein Designs. She has an Etsy shop, a podcast, follow her on Instagram, all under the same name. You can find me on most social media as Yarn Junkie underscore Yarn Junkie on Instagram, Yarn Junkie with the number six on Ravelry, and we have a Yarn Junkie podcast group, which I have a cow going on for right now, the Doodler by Stephen West, Stephanie of the Milkshed blog and I decided to co-host a cow for that because we had been both wanting to knit it since last year and I haven't even cast on mine yet. So it's a very loose knit along. If you finish, great. If you don't, that's okay too. And we would just love to have you chat if you're knitting that. So be sure to post in, in my group. I'm not sure if Stephanie has a thread. I'm a bad co-host and I haven't even checked her group. But she's got a lot of live stuff going on, so maybe not. Anyway, Molly and I were talking a few days ago, and she was asking me what I was crocheting, because Molly also is a crocheter. She's a new knitter and has been crocheting for many years, like me. I have my crochet project housed in my Catherine Fail Designs bag. So she eco-dyes these and then top stitches them. Look at that. I really love this bag, and it's huge. So the project I have in here is a crochet project. I'm using, look at that cake, Miss Babs Wowza in Colorway Coffee Break. And this is her worsted, but it's, it's like a heavy DK light worsted. And I originally bought this to make my husband a sweater, but it's a very, very heavy yarn, and I just don't feel like he would use a heavy sweater like that here in Texas. A fellow knitter knit a sweater out of that at my local yarn shop knit group and she said she wears it like maybe five times a year and I don't want to make my husband a sweater that he's never gonna wear so I decided to use that yarn I put it in my D stash for a while and someone actually asked to buy it after I started this and I was like sorry I found something to do with it and then I edited my stash so this is a crochet blanket that I've been working on. I have showed you guys this, this before, so I was about here. But with the grocery girls talking about their crochet along and their blanket along, they were going along crazy last week and saying how we're doing a knit worthy along for Christmas. And this was going to be my husband's Christmas, or hopefully is going to be my husband's Christmas present. He's been asking for a crocheted blanket for years. We have a couple that our grandmothers made. Each of us have one that our grandmothers made. And we use them a lot, but they were made with Red Heart. When I first started crocheting 15, 16 years ago, he asked me to make him a blanket. And I started it again with Red Heart yarn. And it was just like a scrappy, hideous blanket that the rows on the end were wonky <laughs> because I never went to the end all the way. And so it was, you know, Kind of wavy without intending to be so needless to say it ended up being a dog blanket before too long um, so this is 
Since he wanted me to do a blanket for him, I decided that's what I'd use the Miss Babs for. Sure, it's a high-end luxury yarn, but he, he, he deserves it. He deserves a high-end luxury throw, is what I've decided. He's very knit-worthy or crochet-worthy. So there's my Miss Bab or Sucra Sucra Miniature coffee, because it's coffee break. And the pattern is a free pattern on Ravelry called the Textured Crochet Throw. And all it is is a double crochet row followed by a treble crochet row that's crossed. So there's like four treble crochets there, two, and then you go back and do two. Like you skip over two stitches, treble crochet two stitches. Since it's a free pattern, I'm not giving anything away. Hush bow. Something else I will say is the pattern says to chain X number of stitches. Always, whenever I make anything a crochet project, I never chain because chain gives you that really tight edge. And so I will do a chainless foundation crochet, I believe is what it's called. Google it, YouTube it, and you will learn it and you will be amazed because it makes the base as stretchy as the rest of your project. So it's not like this, you know, super tight bottom on either a garment or a blanket because that's never desirable. So I wasn't gonna show you guys this until I was done with this second ball, but we see, first ball. But we see how that went. But I've used a lot and it's grown a considerable amount. This is my project that sits next to my bed when I, I'm not sure what I wanna work on at night. I will do a row or two or four of this. And I'm not a quick, crochet by any stretch, but I remember someone asking me about my hook. So this hook is a Furls crochet hook, and they're a local to me company. They're down in Austin, but that I consider anything in Texas local to me. And they're handmade wooden heirloom hooks, and they are amazing. This is a size K, and I usually don't work with hooks this big, but I really wanted a nice airy blanket for him. And it's airy without still having like just gaping holes in it too. And I feel like it's gonna be really cozy. So someone asked me, I remember Jody, Tracy asking Jody how she holds her hooks. And I hold mine the same way. But someone also asked me to use this, to like do a video of me using this. So, and it, it was a while back. So if that person even watches anymore, who knows? I'm not one, I'm not a fast crocheter or a fast knitter. I will never be a speed project worker. I wish I could so I could get more projects made, but I do it for leisure. So I'm very, very slow, but I do feel like this hook is nice in my hands. It's, it's way nicer than your typical aluminum crochet hook. And I don't particularly like the ones that have the grips on them, like the silicone maybe it is that they put on them that y'all know what I'm talking about like the clover brand crochet hooks I haven't personally used clover brand but I've used some like that and I just it feels awkward to me to have something there and then my hand is just more awkward but this just makes my hand relax and I feel like it's very smooth and like butter like butter it makes my crocheting go very nicely and I have these in a wide variety of sizes. I think I have four or five, and I need every size hook. But it's very beautiful, very well made. And I even broke one. I, I know I've talked about this before, but for those new viewers, I broke one of these hooks. They have a good warranty, good customer service. I mean, good doesn't even cover it, amazing. Because while, while crocheting something that was probably too tight to be using the hook that I was using, the yarn was too rough and it was just, I was using it to weave in ends and it, the end snapped off because it was one of my smaller hooks. And I contacted Furls and they were like, we're so sorry, we will replace it. And they did within a week or two, I had my new hook. So Furls crochet hooks, cannot say enough about them. They do have a more affordable line as well. I think the wooden hooks are one of their most expensive, but treat yourself, okay? Because they are worth it 100%. That's one of the things that I always ask for, is a furls hook for any gift giving holiday. So my bag, again, cause you know, I'm terrible with show notes. Oh no, it's gonna glare cause the light. 
Catherine Fail Designs, and she does have an Etsy shop. I think you can just type that in and it will pull up because that's where I bought my bag. So another blanket that I've been working on, because it's fall, y'all, and everyone has to work on their blanket during fall. And Molly of Molly Klein Designs, again, asked me what I was doing with all my minis. She asked me if I was doing a Cozy Memories blanket. And yeah, I've started one a few times. So this is the first one that I started, and I'm going to frog all of these because I'm heartbroken about the yarn. These were some of my first mini skeins that I got, like this one's from Spicy Homemaker, and that's her signature colorway. This one's from Andy over at Andre Sue Knits. This one's from Carlene of the Made with Carlene Energy podcast, and it was my first Volan Vine yarn. And then these three are Cat's Kettle, her Christmas mini set last year. So when I first started my Cozy Memories blanket, I thought I wanted to do X's and these decreases in the middle. I decided I didn't like that. Then I was watching the Legacy Knits podcast as well as the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. Bro Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk did a one inch quilt, like a fabric quilt, but a one inch square quilt. And I was just mesmerized by all the squares. And then Sue, hush dogs. Sue of the Legacy Knits podcast did a color block blanket, or is doing a color block blanket, and I was also inspired by that. So I cast on these little tiny squares, and then I was like, no. While I do love the aesthetic of this, I don't love the action of making tiny little squares. It just, you know. So that's another fail. I also, I couldn't find it to show you guys, but I made one hexi, the little puff hexies from Tiny Owl Knits, one. I made one. Go, Lucy. Go. Nope. Lay down. Guess what? I'm more persistent than you, and I'm going to not let you come over here. Go lay down. You are jacking everything up. Podcasting with animals, guys. Isn't it grand? So, cannot find that hexy to show you guys, but I did start a hexy. Whatever. I did decide I would do like a DK weight or worsted weight hexies and make like little chair cushions for my dining room table. I thought that would be very cool. So <clears throat> another one that I started, let me take a sip. I've got hazelnut coffee, hazelnut vanilla coffee. I mix it. It's really yummy. So another blanket that I wanted to do was only sock yarn. Like these are all from friends and I do want to do a friendship scrap blanket with all the minis that I get in swaps because that would just be so cute and amazing. But I also really wanted to do one with only socks that I made. Is that crazy? And I want to do another one that's like all hand spun, like Jenny and Devin are doing, uh, the Handmade and Woolen podcast, all hand spun. Oh, how amazing would that be? Like I don't spin enough, but let's pretend that I did because it's a bucket list project, okay? So this is one that I started actually started with this square. These were the first socks I ever made. These were the second. This is all Patton's Croy. The third socks, I wanted to start with Patton's Croy because I didn't want to jack up any of my awesome hand dyed yarn, beginning socks. The third one I did was actually, I decided to bite the bullet and use one of my awesome hand dyes, but I didn't no longer have that. That was before I gave away all that mini before I decided to make my own sock yarn blanket. But since then I've kept all of them. And the other day I was watching the Once Upon a Corgi podcast and Gabby just briefly mentioned her yarn terrarium, yarn terrarium. And I've had that jar since Atrella's birthday. We bought it for like her Harry Potter birthday in the potions section, whatever. It's just a gumball jar. But maybe it was Prudence's birthday that we bought it and filled it with gumballs. We used it for Atrella's birthday too. Anyhow, the point is when Gabby showed hers off, I was like, oh my gosh, I have one of those. I can totally do that. So I pressed pause on her podcast, went to the kitchen, got that, washed it, got all my minis, all my, my personal sock minis out of the project bag they've been hiding in and, and popped them in there. And I was so, so inspired to start knitting on my Cozy Memories blanket that I picked it up again and knit these two squares. Um... It was actually the rest of this one from that knot on. 
and then this one. But this, I ran out, so I had to pop that in, which is fine. And the square I'm working on right now is a pair of socks I knit for Prudence last year for the Back to School Sock Cal, hosted by Sarah of Love Sock Wool. I was so enabled by her so many times to buy so much yarn. This one right here, I bought because of Sarah. It's called Holly Jolly Texas. It's going to be my Christmas cast on. So that's another blanket I'm making. Here's some more socks. The blue was some elephant, elephant socks I knit Prudence, and this one was a pair of socks I knit for my friend's baby. So those will be the next two, and the beautiful needles I'm using are my only pair of signature needles. Again, a splurge that was totally worth it. My husband was pretty amazed by the end, like the swirl. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, and I'm knitting these on a size zero because I like the gauge. I wanted a heavy, dense blanket, and that's what I'm getting. So, oh yeah, and the, the number is super significant because I cast on 49 stitches. And if you don't know, or if this is your first time joining me, my mom passed away in December and she was only 49. So, 49 stitch, cast on, and then I'm doing the slip one, knit two together through the back loop, slip the pass, pass the slip stitch over, decrease in the center, and purling on the back loop. If you wanted to know that, there you go. And it's in my little starter. I love this bag so much. It's, it's what I do for small projects or when I'm starting a project. It's from Laura of the Fawn Knits. She did a kit. And then I have my little podcaster swag on there. One is from Jeanette of the Bookish Stitcher, and the other is from my friend Carleen. I miss you, Carleen. I miss you. So, if you're watching, if you even have time to watch podcasts. So, those are my, my blankets that I've been working on. And I'll be right back to show you some frogs that have been plaguing me. So, one of the things, I'm not sure if I've shown you guys this yet. I may have. So, Kat, Katrina of the Cat's Kettle podcast, and, or the Yarn 30 podcast, rather, and Cat's Kettle Yarn, and she's Cat's Kettle on Instagram, is hosting a graveyard cow. Now, I cast on this hat, which is a free pattern. I found it on Ralph, uh, Pinterest, I think, and then you can go to the Hedgehog Fibers website and download it. But it's just a really cute cabled hat. I bought the yarn last year to knit this hat for my friend for her birthday. Now, I bought the yarn around her birthday and just let her know I'll, I'll get it to you by Christmas, which is totally fine for Texas. Again, we don't need like a worsted weight hat in the fall because it's often 70 degrees. So I cast on this hat last year, knit to, I got the ribbing done in the first little section of increases. And then when I was reading the cable portion, I was just in over my head. And as a new knitter, I just, I put it away and I was like, I can't. I can't figure it out. It's just going to go. So there's my progress keeper from Hey Ho, hey Holly Ho Hum. It's like this little beetle. Isn't that cool? It's green on one side and then like crystal on the other side. So you can clip it either way. So I started this. These are Knit Picks DPNs. I'm almost certain they're Knit Picks. And... Yeah, I cast it on. I didn't want to figure out where I was to, to finish this. So when I picked it up this year for the Graveyard Cow, I had to buy two balls for this because it says two skeins will be enough for the full hat with pom-pom. So because I already had another cake of this yarn, I went and bought 16 inch needles because I'm not a DPN person any longer and cast on again. And again, I'm to the same place, the same exact spot. And I was reading through the pattern and I was like, I don't really have the mental space to knit this. Something this complex, it just seems really fiddly. And so I went on a hunt, on a search, and I found the, the cable antler hat by Tin Can Knits. And I read through that pattern, which is a free pattern as well. And it seems much more straightforward and it's, basically the same. It's a cabled hat. It's not the same cables, but I'm thinking I'm just going to frog both of these and knit those two hats instead, or two of those hats instead, and then get those like really awesome fur pom-poms for these. 
that I love so much. So those are frogged. Those are going to be frogged. But I had to show you guys my progress before I did it. Because how tragic would it be to go through all of that work, you guys? That's a lot of work. And not get the A for effort. I need the points. I need the credit, okay? Let's be real here. So that will be one of my posts for the graveyard cow. This, I'll talk about this. Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Folks podcast is hosting a read-along for the Swept series, and I've been really bad about reading my book, and I'm, I'm not that interested anymore. I'm kind of, things, I've been having a really hard time in my reading lately. I have never been one to like go through a book and then stop reading it, but here lately, just things just don't hold my interest that long. So I haven't been able to get through a book, I want to say at all this year. Isn't that sad? I've got to change that. I've got to break that habit. So, I mean, I've gotten through a couple of the books, but not the series, so I guess that doesn't really count. But this is my fleece and sea hat that I was knitting for my husband, and he doesn't really like the color. He told me that the other day. So I'm frogging this. I thought about finishing it for me, but I have a hat pattern that I wanted to knit with this yarn originally, and I think I'm going to do that instead. So this is going to be frogged, another project. What's up, y'all? I mean, the frogs are abundant in my house, and I wasn't really enjoying, it's nothing against the design. I love the design of the hat, the fleece and sea hat. It's amazing. I don't have a picture to show you, but everyone's knitting it, so I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's a hand killer. Like, I thought the twisted rib was bad, but even throughout the pattern, you're doing this, you're manipulating the stitches in such a way that maybe it's my needles, maybe if I was doing it on TPNs, it would be better, but I'm not a fan of those, manipulating those stitches just hurts my hands. Maybe I'm a wimp, but there you go. Um, we're continuing with frogs here. This is a pair of socks that I cast on since last week. Also, a Vera Kors pattern. There's an ant in this bag. One rogue ant. Why is there an ant in my bag? My husband says it's because them so sweet. They bother me. They haunt me. Ants do. So that's in my handmade by Olivia bag that I freaking love. Are you kidding me? Look at those socks on the line. And the mushrooms and the bird. Love this bag. I just have my sock whip in here that I cast on the other day that I'm gonna frog. Okay, I love this yarn, I love this pattern, but I feel like this yarn in particular would be amazing. Don't touch those leaf socks. I'm not going to rhyme back. I feel like I should knit the official, unofficial rhyme back socks with this yarn, because it's just so autumnal and so glorious. Oh, look at that. This is the Fawn and the Fox yarn in her Fantastic Mr. Fox colorway. I think it's the Badger base, which is her BFL. And my pretty little acorn stitch marker is from Tia's Terrific Threads. She sent me that in a swap. I'm knitting this on Chow Goo's ones or 2.25 millimeters. And again, I knit the largest size because the last socks that I knit with a pattern were really tight. So I wanted to knit the largest size to be able to have a roomy sock. And I really love it. This is the second time I've started these socks and decided I would like it in a different yarn better. I do have the yarn picked out for it, but I won't spend too much time talking about that right now because I feel like I spend too much time talking about projects that I'm not knitting on. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you those because again, they're gonna be frogged and it seemed tragic to make, to knit all of that and, and not show you guys, hey, I did some knitting. Another thing that I'm having to frog. Yeah, it continues. Isn't it tragic? So my Whispering Pine shawl, I was, I had the mental space this week to sit down and I was like, I'm going to get this lace knocked out. And it's a really easy stitch. I've got to give it to Molly. I really like this particular lace pattern. It's really straightforward and easy. That being said, if you miss one stitch, you screw up the whole thing. And guess what I did? trying to find it. So I missed one yarn over on the first round of lace. Right here, 
See, there's supposed to be two yarn overs there, just like there is there, and there's not, there's one. So the next row is fine, but then on the subsequent rows all this way, the, the second lace row is completely, completely jacked up. And I thought about trying to fudge it, but if y'all remember, this is my Mother's Day Remembrance shawl, so I, I want it to be perfect. I've spent all this time beating it. I am being, beating the lace, because you guys told me to. So I just feel like I would kick myself if I just didn't frog it. It's an easy lace pattern. I can throw in a lifeline because of the contrasting. It's going to be easy. I just need to do some serious sh shawl surgery, which will be fine. I just need to wait until I have a few days to do that. So this week has been really busy for me. I have been up at the girls' school a lot volunteering. Prudence has been kind of having a hard time of late just with being away. She just wants to be home. And so I've been going up to the school as much as I can and volunteering. And that's really, really, really helped with her. Like the other night, I put her to bed and I said, Usually she like cries, she wants to come sleep in our bed, she just misses us so much, and it's like heart-wrenching to put your kid to bed, sad. And this, this particular night she was like, oh, you're coming to school tomorrow? Cool, see you tomorrow. And she just lay down and went to sleep. So something else I did want to say about this project, the Shaw is by Molly of Molly Clatt, the homespun house fame, because, I mean, who doesn't know Magical Molly? And my bag is by Molly Klein Designs. So I freaking love this chicken bag with that amazing interior just gets me every single time. And so this is like my Molly project. I love it. It's totally Molly. I love that name too. Molly, Holly, those names are just really cute to me. Um, what else? Okay, so because of all the frogs, I decided to cast on something easy. Prudence was watching me knit a pair of socks and asked if they were for her, and they weren't. So I took her over to the stash, and I was like, well, pick out some yarn. I'll make you some socks, because it's almost her birthday, and she needs a birthday pair of socks. So I cast on using my Addie's Sock Rockets Magic Loop. But once I got my stitches increased, I switched over to... Sorry about the dog drinking. They're thirsty. They're so thirsty. I switched over to these little cirques. And I know I keep saying I don't like them, but I keep trying to like them because it's just so, so darn convenient to have this little discreet project, like I've said. Just this little, like, no big movements, no, you know, drawing out a cord and shoving it in the other way. It's just, just round and round and round and round. Knit, 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 knit. So this is the yarn that Prudence picked, and it's Nomadic Yarns in colorway Kiss the Girl, which is an aerial reference. And I'm so, so in love with it. Let me spread it out here without dropping my stitches. It's totally blown out because I have a light behind you. But it's orange and this beautiful aqua color and this awesome green and a couple of different shades of purple. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Tim was super impressed with this ball of yarn. He was like, that is cool. Did it come like that? I was like, yeah. He was like, why doesn't all yarn come like that? Am I right? Ashley is just a genius. And I have, I have not knit with her yarn yet. I have two others in the stash with another on the way. I had to get one of her Halloween colorways. I had to. But this is amazing. I love the base. This is the Stellina base. So it's just got this like hint of sparkle, which is how I like my Stellina. Just a tiny bit of sparkle. And it's so soft. I really like the gauge I'm knitting this on. Ones, so 2.25s, and it's just perfect. I think I cast on for 56 stitches because the last couple of pairs of socks I've knit Prudence have been 52 or 54. And this one's just a little bit roomy on the sides and she said it's really comfy, so. I will keep on chugging away on this and probably have a finished pair of socks before long. I decided I'm going to do her shorty socks and hopefully have enough for me shorty socks, even maybe with a contrast heel and toe. So these can be her socks when she misses me. When she goes to school and she's like, I miss my mom, she can wear her mama socks and we can match all day long. That's a better picture.
No, it's not because the orange is still like. Anyway, it's beautiful yarn. And I have it in my Nomadic Yarn Sock Cube. So this is like the perfect thing to take with me on my golf cart job. It's my cart cube. And on here I have a San Francisco keychain. A couple of my buddies at my restaurant job, a couple of the waiters, they're a pair of gay guys, took a trip to San Francisco for one of their sister's weddings and brought me back this. Isn't that sweet? They're always shaking their head at me because I'm always on my phone at work trying to catch updates and they're like, what are you buying now? Wouldn't you like to know? Beautiful yarn and project bags, of course. So, what else do I have to show you? Oh, we're all here. We're doing good on time. I've showed you guys a lot. So, one more thing, but I'm going to stop right here and be right back so I can gather it up. Okay, so I actually have two more things to show you guys, but I'm going to save one of them for next time. I got an epic swap package, and there's just too much, too much, too much to show. And I'm so grateful, and I love it all, and I just, I want to give it its proper debut and not rush through it. But I did get some stuff for giveaways, and I just recently saw my subscriber number has increased a lot. I have, I think it's around 1,400 subscribers on YouTube. What? And then about 1,300 on Instagram, which is just insane. Like, I don't sell project bags. I don't dye yarn. You guys follow me and watch me to see what I'm making myself. So that people tune in at all, that I have five people watching is truly mind-boggling mind to me. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful to this community, so grateful to the friends I've made, so incredibly grateful to the people who have sent me stuff that they've made, that they've taken their time and effort, and that's just too kind. So I wanted to share a little bit of love back into the community and do a giveaway. So I will host this on Ravelry. Um, I'll probably post something about it on my Instagram page, directing you over to Ravelry. I think that's the fairest way to do it, to like make it a podcast giveaway as opposed to an Instagram giveaway. Um, and if you don't, if you don't Ravelry, I'm sorry, but yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. So I'll create a thread and I think the prompt, I'm a big movie buff. Okay. Huge movie buff. And I want to know your top five favorite movies. Top five favorite movies, I'll list mine in that thread and I'll draw a winner. I'll leave it open for, I don't know, two, two or three recordings. I'm really bad about that and I still need to draw a winner for the arabesque sock pattern. I never did that because I'm the worst did. But I will draw a winner in about, like, the not the next episode, but the next episode, I'll draw a winner. Does that sound good? And I'll put all the dates and stuff, you know, all legit podcaster like in the in the show notes that I never have. I'll totally have them today, swear, swear. So, the things that I wanted to show you guys. So, Melissa of Knitty by Nature is just one of my very good friends, the Knitty by Nature Etsy shop, and she's always sending me awesome stitch markers, and I wanted to share some with you guys. So we've got this set that's a little Progress Keeper Fairy. Sorry, it's like being blown out by the light. And, it's on this ring that you can clip to your project bag, which I just think is awesome. And it's got these slippy, slippable stitch markers, which are some of my favorite ones to use. So this, a tally counter. Thank you, Melissa, for your awesome donation. Another little thing I'm putting in the package, so that's going, is this set by Barbara of Knitting I Love. This is her circular needle case, DPN Cozy, um, little progress keeper tabs or hat tabs and then on the back she's got her coaster in there too and again my husband saw my coaster sitting on my bedside and he was like this is cool is it a needle gauge coaster like yeah it is cool because I mean when are you not sitting around needing a needle gauge and having some tea or coffee I always do that so this is going in the package that's not all you guys I got this out of my stash. I was wanting to send some yarn because, you know, you got to send some yarn. And this is going to be blown out by that light. Let me see if I can turn it off now that it's brighter out here. 
So it wasn't very bright out here a while ago. No, it's still blown out. Anyway, this is a cat's kettle yarn that I've had in my stash. I've been wanting to knit it, but I have a lot of sock yarn to get through. So spread the love, right? And I love cat's kettle yarn. She is an amazing dyer. Look at that. And this is her acid pops on her matte sock fingering weight, 75% superwash, 25% nylon, acid pops. So super fun yarn and look, it kind of matches. It kind of matches. Oh yeah, you guys know, that feeds my happy. So that's not all, that's not all. Another thing, so where did my note go? Ryan. Ryan from Stitches in You Bags sent me a project bag and she worded it like, I hope you love your project bag. I have a coupon code for your viewers. So I took that to mint this project bag was for me, but I know that a lot of people have comment, commented as of late that they love my project bag collection. And while I agree and I would love to keep this bag, I need to spread the love. So I'm gonna send you guys this bag and I actually went, but she has a coupon code for those who don't win, Junkie15, and Junkie is all capitalized, J-U-N-K-I-E 15, and it will give you 15% off until the end of October. So how great is that? Thank you so much, Ryan, for that coupon code and for your project bag donation. So she included two of these tees in a mini, but I took the mini and one of the tees out, just so I always remember my first little uh, project bag that was sent to the podcast as a giveaway. And I put in one of my own personal minis that I just knit my Santa Fe socks with. So this is my mini, and then I also put in two of my favorite tees, along with the tee that Ryan sent. I set, saved one for myself. So a couple of tees, a mini, and then her card. Stitching you bags on Etsy. And then the bag, you guys. This was really hard for me to give away, okay? Let me just say that because this is adorable and I have a great story to go with it. When do I not have a great story? So it's these little storks. It's got this really cute little nest with eggs as a zipper pull. Really love that. I need to find one to get because that's just too cute. Very nice suede pull. Her tags are like this really satiny fabric that are top stitched really nicely. And you see those little storks? You see this one standing on his first little leg? So my mom used to stand like that while cooking and now I do it. And my girls just think it's so hilarious that I'll stand like a stork. It's just comfortable being as tall as I am. I'll stand up and put one, one leg on the other if that doesn't make sense to you, if you can't get the mental picture, whatever. But I do. I stand around like a stork all the time. So this bag was, it touched my heart. And are you kidding? Yellow and blue Ravenclaw colors representing. I really love this bag. But I did go to her shop, use the coupon code, and bought a different bag for myself so I can still keep one. And she included a little lavender sachet that coordinates with the bag. And it's got these adorable polka dots in it. So you guys can win this, and it is a very decent size. So this is a two, I would even say three skein project, two skein at least, with you know room for your project. So your cakes will be at the bottom, and you have room. So I'm gonna start to put some of the little giveaway stuff in here so it stays all nice for you guys. And that's not all. As part of the swap that I won't show you guys right now because there's just so much to go through, she sent me, I'll put it in the plastic too so it doesn't get dog hair on it. She sent me pom-pom makers, but I already have a collection of pom-pom makers. So I wanted to pay it forward and I'm going to include this in the swap package. Or not swap package, prize giveaway. Prize giveaway as, you know, a thank you to all of you guys for just being so amazing. So you're gonna get all of this, this little prize kit. Again, I will be sure to lay everything out and post a really beautiful photo. Get it away from that little candle that's burning. A beautiful photo so you guys can see it all laid out and go to my Ravelry group and enter into the thread that will say, 
thank you giveaway or what have you. But seriously, guys, I cannot thank you enough. It's been so amazing this past year and a half to make so many new friends and to inspire so many of you to make things that I've made or buy yarn that I've bought. So thank you. And thank you to my, my, my prize donors. That's the word I'm looking for. Prize donors. I seriously couldn't do it without you because it's amazing that you take your time and effort, make things to send to me. So thank you, Ryan, Barbara, Melissa, Celia, for all of your donations. And yes, from the bottom of my heart. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and 